Okay, um, I found one fairly tall, straight, unbranched uh, shoot down by the creek. It's not as long as I'd like, but it's the best one I can find right here today. And it's a little early in the season to get them to the mark master, but we'll see if we can split this one. I cut it off square, so I'm going to start by angling it off. And then I find the pippy center, which is roughly in the middle, right there. And I put a line across with my knife at the bottom of the pippy center. And roughly a third of the wood there. Then I take the remaining bigger side and coming in from the top with the second cut, splitting that one half side to side. So first I'm taking one off this way from the low end of the cut and I'm splitting the rest of the cut down. That gives me roughly three equal sized pieces. Now I'm splitting this. It would be nice if I had three hands, but I don't, so I use my mouth as a third hand. So for this part, I won't be able to describe it because I'll be holding a stick in my hand. But what I'm going to do is attempt to split these guys evenly out into three strips. Okay, I'm going to hold the long end between my legs, get these separated a little bit, get one in my teeth, Now the secret here is that if one of them starts to feel stiff, I pull at a harder angle so that it loses wood to the other two. If one's feeling skinny, I release pressure on it a little bit so it has time to collect wood from the other ones. I can do this better by feel than by sight, so I often do this while I watch television or get distracted in some other way so I'm not tempted to look because my fingers are much more sensitive. This is getting kind of skinny, so I'm just going to take these three pieces. You notice this is kind of a buggy, not ideal piece. All the little orange or darker specks are insects, insect larvae that are in the stem, creating bad spots. Now I take each one of these three, and I have to do this while it's pretty green. I can't let this dry and re-soak it. The European basket willow I could let dry and re-soak, but the native basket willow I have to do while it's pretty fresh. Move those guys down. So the next step, take one of the thirds, and this one's already got the angle cut on the top, so I'm going to find the middle of mass here with my knife, and I'm going to split it. And I want the bark, the bark side is the side I'm going to save. What I want is the cambium layer right under the bark. So I'm splitting away what's called a cull, which is the inner weak woody part. This one is going to be in half. So there's a bump in the wood. However, there's a large node. And this way you don't want ones that have branches on them because it will not split readily through the branch section. So I'm splitting out the flexible cambium layer from the brittle inner wood. Now if I has if this wasn't the first one of the season, I'd be doing this a lot faster. Now we've done that twice. I could take this and store it, and at this point I can pretty much re-soak it. But I, before I use this in a basket, I will split it. Uh, at least once more. Each time getting a finer, thinner piece 
till I get something that's super flexible. What I have to watch out for is that I don't want to just peel the bark off. I want to leave that fine inner cambium layer. I don't know if you can see that. If you get in here close. Mm -hmm. But right between my thumbnails is that little strip of cambium. It's already it's attached to the bark. But I'm, I'm getting all the older wood parts off. And there's a bad spot. This is not an ideal stem. So this is split in thirds and then in half, then in half again. I'm just going to do that little section. Then we could trim this up. a real fine basket we'd split it additional an additional time or two until we got it down as fine as we needed for that particular basket and if this was later in the year the bark would come off pretty easily but this time of the year you've got to sort of scrape it off and some of the bark sticks and you don't get as nice you know, piece Again, I'm doing this mainly by feel, and so it just takes practice. So you've got to work a number of these before you feel, but you can feel how flexible this is now. This is my, my strand. It's got a, a bud that I managed to break through, but it's a stiff spot. And so the ideal one will not have any buds on it, and I'll get a perfectly even strand. I've gotten, I found stems in this canyon where I'd been cutting, where I'd been coppicing by cutting it back each year, up to eight feet tall and the size of one of my fingers at the base, all unbranched so that I could get three eight-foot strips of material from one stem. But that's pretty rare out here in this creek where it's battered every year and the bugs get at it, where I don't have real control over it. So we'll just break it off there because there's a bad buggy spot. So here's a strip of flexible split willow. Now this needs to dry and completely dry and be resized and shaped again before I actually use it in the basket. But in this state it would be good to store it. So there's now this takes a bit of time to get down. I learned to do this initially in 1979, so that's going on 30 years, so 29 years ago. And I don't do it a lot. I'm not a real expert like some of the Indian basket makers. People who do this pretty full time, but I can, I can get the result just a little slowly. But that's the basics of it. Just have to be patient. Most people, if, uh, in a beginning class, if they get a piece that long, they're super happy. Uh, some people end up with pieces like six inches long because they just keep splitting it out. But with practice and feel and trusting your fingers rather than your eyes, you'll eventually get there.